Last episode, we gave Uma some nice and shiny jewelry, and she loved it. But of course, it was not the last time we played with metal. Finally, those kids are ready to talk about the famous electric motor. I know we've been keeping you out of the loop for months, but we are ready to share everything with you. And we're going to share so much that one episode alone will not be enough. So, ladies and gentlemen, put your little comfy socks on and get ready to watch part one of Electro Beak Experiment. We all remember the little discussion we had a long time ago about why we choose to switch to electric. And of course, we can go on and on about all the reasons why we're so passionate about it. But we won't be doing that today. Some time ago, back when we were still in the hard, we removed the old diesel engine. We also removed all the interesting bits that came along with it. That one coming. This thing is um, full of diesel fuel. So now we have to figure out how to get 20 gallons of diesel fuel out of here into something else before we can take the tank out. Yup, out with the old. Now let's fast forward a bit. So we got our motor. Great. And it works. Great. But if you know the basic of the subject or know anything about boat repairs, you know that it's never as easy as you think. So here we are. We gathered all that was needed. You know, batteries, cables, switches, and a bunch of other electronic bits. And it was time for some studying. Once we researched and carefully analyzed all the diagrams, we came up with a plan for how everything would go together, and it was time to make it real. Uh, so this is two gauge cable that we're going to use for jumpers to connect our battery bank in series. Uh, it's marine grade cable, and then and then these are just crimp line connections, and then this is some heat shrink tubing with adhesive in it, so that it all stick together once I heat it up. That's the adhesive. So that is a very sealed battery cable. Five more to go. We started by hooking up the motor at 12 volts to check operation at low speed. This was my old bicycle computer that then managed to hook it up to the electric motor. Uh, well, I managed to calibrate it so that this will tell us the RPM of the electric motor. Yeah, what he says. <laughs> All right, so let's give it a test. Once that was successfully completed, it was time for testing at 48 volts. Forty-eight volt battery bank. 
Okay, so moment of truth. These are 48 volts coming out of our 48 volt battery bank. Power switch going to a fuse, going to a shunt, so we can tell how many amps we're drawing. Going to the main, going through the key switch, main contactor to the controller, to the armature of the motor, and then this is a 12 volt battery that's controlling the field of our motor, and that's connected to a contactor down here that's connected to the throttle. So when the throttle's activated, it activates 12 volts to the field. And when all this is on, it puts 48 volts through the armature. So moment of truth. We're gonna turn this on. We're gonna activate the contactor. Nervous? A little bit. And throttle. Ah, it works! With everything working, you are ready to connect the motor to the prop shaft. Sweet! Alright, so we thought we were going to be able to modify our transmission um, and mount it somehow to the motor, but that just kind of seemed to complicate things. So instead, we've got a brass fitting from the end of a prop shaft, uh, which used to be attached to the transmission like this. Uh, and instead, we're gonna mount it to the motor like this so that it'll bolt right to the prop shaft and we don't need a transmission width because we'll be able to get an electronic reversing contactor. Uh, so I'm smoothing. The problem is, is that this is tapered to go on the prop shaft and this was cylindrical. So I got it roughed out with the grinder and now uh, hopefully I'll be able to kind of finish sand it with some 400 grit emery paper. Yep, after many trials and tests, it was starting to come together and work as expected. But as you might have guessed, the fun isn't over. Oh, and that horrible sound you keep hearing is a bushing in the back of the motor that we will be replacing with a bearing so that the motor shaft won't be rubbing metal on metal. All I have to do is take this plate off and take it into the machine shop and have put a bearing in it. As always, we're excited to share with you our next step in part two of Electrobeak Experiment. But until then, cheers! And action. It's quieter, cheaper, environmental friendly, less maintenance, and my personal favorite, no fuel needed, blah, 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 blah. Get it? Good.